The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. Today I'd like to talk about the concept of the renewed mind. The phrase, the renewed mind, or renew your mind, is in Romans chapter 12. And I like to think of renewed mind as a, a pattern of thinking that's healthy. It's a godly thinking. I was thinking the other day because my background was that for many years I worked in the hazardous material field. And there's very few people I know, in fact none that I know, that would intentionally go out and eat a hazardous waste product thinking that it would make them healthy. The fact of the matter is it would probably kill us. Most of these toxic chemicals, things that are so multi-syllable that we can't even pronounce, actually come from manufacturing processes in the aerospace industry because they needed to develop special products and chemicals in cleaning. But the end result is we have this huge mass of toxic waste which actually is polluting in the world and, and in many ways harming people. In the same way that I would never go and intentionally eat toxic waste thinking it's going to help me, why would I want to have toxic thinking? because there is such thing as toxic thinking. Now, when, we, when you think of a thought, the, uh, the, most of us think of it as, as almost like something that's existing outside, but it's really not. A thought is actually taking up real estate in your mind in the sense of it occupies space. A thought is actually a protein chain that we call a neuron and when that neuron interacts with other neurons, it stimulates what we call thoughts. It's, it's a, a physical, chemical process that produces emotions. But there's toxic thinking. And God instructs us that one of the disciplines of those who follow Christ is we need to eliminate toxic thinking. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he says, I urge you, brothers, in the, in the view of the mercy of God, in other words, because of God's great mercy and grace on our lives, to offer our bodies as a pleasing sacrifice, something that basically, it, that he says it's our spiritual act of worship. Some people say, well, I want to be more spiritual. Well, here's how you can do it. Change your thinking. In, in fact, the very next verse talks about and uses that phrase, renewing the mind, which I really don't like the phrase to renew, and I'll, and I'll explain why in a second. In verse two, it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. There is an actual pattern out there, a way of thinking, a way of promoting things, and God is telling us, don't conform. Don't let your thinking be like that. He says, but be transformed, be changed, be metamorphosed. It's, it's the word metamorpho in Greek, but it means to be changed like the, the caterpillar into the butterfly by the renewing of your mind. Now, the word renew actually isn't, isn't the right word, way to, um, to describe this because to renew means that I, it actually started out like fresh and clean to begin with. The problem is our thinking never did. You know, our thinking, you know, because we were born corrupt, our thinking has always been messed up. You can see children. I, I see young kids and, you know, they, they lie at a very young age. But we need to upgrade our thinking. To upgrade our thinking means that we change it from the thinking of the way of the world and we bring it up to the thinking of like how God does. And that's what the renewing of the mind is. Now, if someone told me, hey, Dan, I want you to go build a cabinet like this bookcase that's behind me. But if no one ever showed me how or what a good bookcase looked like, I'd be free on my own to design it and come up with something. And it could be good. It might be bad. It's kind of like a cup of coffee. You don't know if, if it's a good or bad cup of coffee unless you've had both good and bad. Then you have something to compare with. And that's exactly what God does in this section in Romans. He gives us a compare and a contrast so that, he, that you can tell, is my thinking upgraded? Is it godly and pleasing to God? Or is it the pattern of the world? If we look at um, verse 9, it starts off 12.9 in Romans here. Love must be sincere. Hate what's evil, cling to what's good. There's the compare and the contrast. Are you hating what's evil? Are you clinging to what's good? 
If you are, then you've got upgraded thinking. If you're not, then you're not renewing your mind in this sense. Verse 10, be devoted one another in brotherly love. How is your devotion to other people? Are you actually fellowshipping with others and being involved with others where you can be devoted and, and loving one another? If you're not, God says you don't have upgraded thinking. How about honoring one another above yourselves? You know, again, I know many people who love the Lord, but they're off doing their own thing. They're not honoring or preferring other people above themselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. How is your zeal? How hard are you for the Lord Jesus Christ? If you find that it's, it's waning, then maybe a result of toxic thinking, not upgraded thinking. He goes on and says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So there's an easy way to test. How's your prayer life? How do you deal, how do you deal with stress and pressure? Does it wig you out or does it run you, you know, into the curb? Or are you patient in times of, tri of trial and stress and, and tribulation? Also, verse 13, share with God's people who are in need. You know, the statistics show us that the Christian giving actually is no more than non-Christians. That it's as low as two and a half to three percent in the body of Christ as a whole. That's really pretty sad. How is your giving? Do you take care of others in need? Do you practice hospitality? Verse 14, do you bless those that persecute you or do you curse them? Receive, I received a nasty letter the other day. My first inclination was, I just wanted to come right back at the person. And I sat back, took a little time and realized, no, I need to write a letter that's blessing this person. Yeah, we can deal with the issues, but I don't need to be antagonistic. I need to have upgraded thinking. Then I'm gonna be pleasing to God. See, that's the point. And this list goes on, live in harmony with one another, don't be proud, be willing to associate with people of low position, don't be conceited, don't repay evil for evil, and, and on. But I, and I encourage you, read this section because it's very specific. Verse 18, if it's possible, as much as it depends on you, live at peace with all men. You know, live at peace with everybody? Yeah, that's what God says, and that's upgraded thinking. Verse 19, don't take revenge. I know people who are very vengeful, but leave God's room for God's wrath. And then, and then it goes on in verse 20, if your enemy's hungry, feed them, and, and, and such and such. In verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We have an obligation when we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior to change our thinking, and that's the beauty to it. Our brain has what's been called plasticity. It can be molded. It is exactly what God says it is. It can be conformed. There's a Dr. Caroline Leaf, L-E-A-F, and she is a Christian uh, medical doctor, I believe a neuroscientist, who has studied the brain, done MRIs and all of that, and what, her, uh, what she has actually proven is we can change our thinking, which is exactly what God is telling us what he wants us to do. We don't have to eat on toxic waste. We have the choice to eat good thoughts, to change our thinking. How are you dealing with resentment, bitterness? Are you holding on to unforgiveness? That's toxic thinking. Do you have malice, envy, pride, toxic thinking? We have an obligation if we're followers of Jesus Christ to do everything we can to eliminate this kind of, of, of thinking process and to upgrade our thinking. And then God says, when we do, we will be pleasing to him and it's our obligation to offer ourselves in this way of a pleasing sacrifice to God.